another one, even though I was trying as hard as I could to get another one for the camera, but I didn't. The rising tide wasn't, wasn't good. And as you can see, I was fishing quite for a long time because the last time I was talking to you, it was a low water and we are on a high water now. And in a typical Irish manner, I also had all uh, four seasons in one day. So at the moment, I'm kind of having a summer from that side, a um, bit of a winter there, and uh, a little bit, bit of a hailstone falling down. So <laughs> the hailstone. <laughs> um, joys of living in Ireland. If you don't like the weather, wait 15 minutes and it will change. It was brilliant to get a uh, fish. Uh, quite a few hits, actually, probably seven or eight hits, one fish hooked and landed. And um, coming on to a lures, I'll show you my very best lures and I'll tell you when do I use them and how do I use them. So I usually, when I go sit trout fishing, if I can, I usually have uh, two rods with me. And the reason for that is that I have a standard heavy rod uh, for a typical uh, far casting and launching lures out the horizon. And I have a um, light rod as well. I start with the light one. Uh, this one is a major craft uh, sky rod and what I love to use this rod for is a uh, small crankbait like that. Now the problem with them is that they don't cast far at all. So if you can position yourself so you have the wind in your back, these are real real killers. Anything that is a shallow diver in about 40 to 70, 80, 90 millimeters will be perfect. I absolutely love, not the hailstone, I absolutely love this uh, Yozuri surface minnow and this is uh, the smaller version and I had uh, quite a few sea trout on that guy. So my setup here is a small reel, it's a Daiwa Frames LT2000 a rod that is 8 feet 6 inches a lures 0.8 to a 10 gram casting lures and I have a four pound fluorocarbon straight through here. So that will be my first choice always, but only if the conditions are right and conditions aren't right most of the time. So that's where I go with my uh, standard go-to uh, setup, the new Skyline, the nine feet one, and this is the medium version casting 10 to 26 it will cast a little bit heavier as well. And the type of lures I use with this setup, I will be using the standard like clip-on um, lures and the ones I absolutely love are the Kilty Catchers in 20 gram, the swivels and the hooks that they come with as well as the split rings are not great. So I'll change them. I'll make sure I put an extra split ring or two. I will change the swivel as well to a better, but after that, the lures are absolutely perfect. And the larger ones, 32 grams, never leave my box when it comes to bass fishing. And for the uh, sea trout fishing, the small ones are really, really good. The only other lure that is kind of a fixed lure, even though I have uh, plenty of them in the box, the only other one I really use a lot are these uh, Westin Solve Pillen in 16 and 13 gram. The ones I prefer are the 13 grams ones. These ones are 16 gram, but I use them depending on the conditions. And the logic behind that is that the uh, kilty catchers imitate a uh, small prey, as in small sardines, sprat, whereas these long guys imitate sandals. So I have a one sandal imitation and I have a one kind of a bait fish imitation, if you like. Don't get yourself too many. Get yourself one or two that you have a confidence in. I have uh, tons of confidence in this guy and these guys and don't really fish anything else when it comes to a metals, fixed metals. So that's my first presentation when it comes to the heavier lures. The second presentation is pretty much exactly the same with my teaser fly. I absolutely love this one. It really banked me so many fish. So the beauty of this teaser fly rig, as you know, I love it. Um, but the beauty is this guy and this guy create a competition in the water, okay? I, uh, if, you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my uh, other videos about this uh, teaser rig. They will be down there in the description or somewhere on the screen. Um, and you will get the uh, fish on the teaser fly itself uh, if you use it. But it also makes this lure much, much better. 
And my third setup is a different type of a teaser fry, but it's specifically made for a sea trout fishing. And as an inline lures, but not lures alone, as you can see, there is a lure and there is also a fly. So it's a slightly a different setup. It's a teaser fly too, but it's not a swim bite teaser fly. It's more like a shrimp teaser fly. So the way this works, I have it on the uh, winders. I have a piece of line, maybe about three feet or just under a meter, all in all. And I have an inline lure, whatever is your choice of a lure. I have a hook, obviously. Um, there is a small swivel over here. And over here I have a um, fly. And this one is a shrimp fly. That water here is absolutely stuffed with them sand shrimps. So that's a Pater Grissom uh, shrimp, I believe. And it is not tied the same as the other one. It's tied on a little, on a little piece of line. So on a stop, it pulsates. And as we know, sea trout are notorious for shedding hook. So using an inline lures always help with the problem. So I think I'll tie another one of the um, inline shrimp tether fry rig and I show you how I tie this one. itself might look a little complicated but in fairness it's very easy to tie so what you will need is a hook a line I have a 16 pounds here anything between 12 and 16 pounds should be perfect you will need a um, swivel a couple of a um, couple of uh, split rings and a small solid ring obviously last but not least you will need your lure and I have um, Westin D360 over here to die. Okay, so we'll start with a bit of a line. And what you want to do to start with is you want to start with a big loop. And when I mean a big loop, I mean a big loop. <laughs> so just fold them in half and create a big loop. Now what you want to do is you want to um, make it stronger you want to do make a triple loop. Moisten it a little bit. There you go. Now, what you want to get is, you want to get one tag a little bit longer. That will be the tag that will be going to your swivel. The other tag, shorter, will be going to your fly. And at the end of this line, we'll have the lure. So firstly, we'll cut the tag over here. And now what you have is the top part going to a swivel. This will be going to a fly and that's the line for the lure. So we'll start at the lure end. First goes the lure, then a couple of beads. Now I've lost one of them already, so I'll put two of them, the orange and the red one. Now what goes next are a couple of split rings. However, the very first thing is not a split ring, but a solid ring. And I have a teardrop solid ring here, and the reason for that is that I want this line to sit in the same spot, but also I want it to be a solid uh, ring instead of split ring, so I have no chance of a line going through the split ring and losing the entire rig and maybe even a fish. So a hook, a split ring, into another split ring, into a solid ring, two beads and a lure. Two and a half feet above, we have the shorter tag end for the fly and the longer tag end where the swivel goes. 
and the last but not least is the shorter tag end where we'll add the fly. I use that rig with a selection of shrimp flies and these are the ones I like to use. The bigger pattern grison creating loads of water movement and pulsating very nicely. I use it when the water is a little bit more colored and when the water is very clear I would go for one of the smaller patterns with a natural in a natural colors. And the fly will attach with a perfection loop. I don't necessarily like to just tie it in with a normal knot because that restricts the movement and sometimes fly will go this way, that way and it looks unnatural. So I prefer a little loop at the end and the one I use is the perfection loop. So try to follow my steps. So you start with making a loop and then you put your fly on and you make another loop and that line goes through the middle. <laughs> now this loop with the fly on goes through the other loop and out it goes. We tighten the whole lot and we could attack. And that's more or less how this rig should look like. A swivel, fly, and the lure. And the only thing outstanding to do is to put it on the winder, just like so, so it's um, ready to use whenever you need it. It's slashing over there again, just on the other side of the uh, story. But that's sea trout fishing. Uh, it's only April, March, April. May is the best time to be fishing for, for them over here. They are on the feed right now. So uh, give it a bash, try those rigs, try those lures I showed you. Hopefully they will be of uh, use to you and uh, give it a bash, have a good time and I'll see you at the next one.